In this video, I'm going to explain what the Bible says in order to help our understanding of why did God have to go to such great lengths in order to forgive the sin of humanity. Alright then, why did God send himself down so that he could sacrifice himself to himself in order to appease himself? Even those with the most passing familiarity with the Bible will be aware of God's law. This is a good place to start. God has a law. Do not lie, do not steal, do not murder. The Ten Commandments. I don't think that not lying was part of the Ten Commandments. Also, there was a lot more to God's law other than the Ten Commandments, where he says that you can't eat anything with a forked tongue, or anything with hooves, or whatever, or that you can't wear clothes that are a mixture of two kinds of material. Those were all part of the law, too. What is sin? Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. You haven't really told me what sin is. And what is the punishment for breaking God's law? Infinite torment, worse than any form of torture than you can ever imagine for your finite crimes. It is death. The wages of sin is death. And so when we sin, we earn death. Death is the punishment for sin. So every baby that's ever been miscarried or aborted earned their death by sinning in the womb? Or even infants and small children for that matter. God didn't just arbitrarily decide that lying is wrong. God is truth. And so lying is wrong because it is against the very nature of God. Then how did he ever allow it to exist? How then could he create the circumstances for it to ever appear in the first place? So let's go back to the beginning of the world, before man sinned, before death entered the world. Earth was paradise. It was a perfect world. There was no death, no bloodshed. Everything was in perfect harmony. All the animals ate plants, not each other. That is, according to a book of mythology, that was written way beyond the time that those events could have ever occurred. And there was a man and a woman, the parents of the human race. Well, I mean, not really. I mean, the Bible never says that they were the only people there. And when they sent their son off, he somehow found a wife. So where did she come from? God told them, do not eat from the forbidden fruit or you will die. God was giving them a choice. Just as you would not force someone to marry you, God was giving Adam and Eve a choice whether they wanted to spend forever with God or if they wanted to depart. But that's not what he told them. He simply told them not to eat from a magical tree that will give them the knowledge of good and evil. And when they ate it, then, and only then, did they have an understanding of what was good and what was evil. So God giving him that choice, when he obviously didn't know the difference between good and evil, didn't really matter, did it? Sadly, they did uh, eat from the fruit and separated all creation from the source of life, bringing death into the world. But they weren't the ones who brought death into the world. That was God. All that they did was eat from a magical tree. God was the one who decided, you know what, I'm going to let everyone die. I'm not going to let there be thorns. I'm going to let animals eat each other, apparently. All because of somebody who, by God's design, did not know the difference between right and wrong. So now we all must be punished for it. Now the world is separated from God in death, and I, I don't mean to scare anyone. I think pretty much all Christians want to scare people. But the Bible says if you have not yet had your sins forgiven, you're actually dead right now. You see, the biblical view of life, true life, is having fellowship with the source of life, having a relationship with God. When Adam and Eve sinned, they entered into death, though their bodies were still functional. Again. God put them into death. Our bodies, our flesh, are still biologically alive like a tree is. But our soul, our spirit, which is the source of spiritual life, is truly dead. You are essentially, if you have not yet had your sins forgiven, if you've not been restored to a relationship with God, you are nothing but a dead soul in a living body. And so if you're wondering, why is the world the way it is, where there's death everywhere? Why do I have this emptiness inside of me? Why do I feel so alone? You know, not everybody has this emptiness inside of them. Not everybody feels alone. 
Not everybody has this emotional problem. And there's far better explanations for feeling alone and empty than you don't have Jesus. It's because you have been dead your entire life from birth, separated from God. You are a dead soul inside a living body floating in a universe that has been separated from the source of life. You don't have another chance later. This is it right now. You have to return to God now. You have to have your sins forgiven now. You have to come into a right relationship with God right now. I mean, I tried to get into a relationship with him. I mean, we talked for like a couple minutes, and he gave me his number, because, I mean, I've been texting it for quite a while, and he won't return any of my texts or calls, so I think he wants us to go our separate ways. However, as I've explained, we were actually already dead when we were born because of Adam's sin. From the moment we're born, despite the fact that we have not done anything, we are ultimately horrible people worthy of death simply because we had the parents that we do. Just as Adam disobeyed God's law and brought death to mankind, Jesus Christ perfectly obeyed God's law and then paid the penalty for Adam and all mankind's sin, which is death, in order to redeem the human race and atone for their sins. If you are a member of another religion and you believe God can just forgive you without atonement, without satisfying God's law, Please imagine this scenario. Well, I'm not a member of a religion, so I guess I don't count. You've broken the law and you go to a human court. And the court says the punishment for your law breaking is 40 years in prison. If you just say to the judge, judge, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and the judge says, okay, you're free to go, that's not justice. That's an evil judge because the judge has perverted justice. They have not ensured that the punishment was meted out. But the thing about God is that apparently he's the one that you're sinning against and he's the one that you have to present your case for. So instead of God being a judge, imagine God being somebody who is suing you for damages. Now obviously you're guilty of the crime, so the damages have to be paid. But if you show enough regret, then that person who is suing you says, you know what, never mind, I will take his punishment for him. He doesn't have to do that. If he sees that I have the regret, and that in his eyes I shouldn't be punished, then he can just choose not to punish me. God cannot simply ignore his law. I thought God could do anything. The God of the Bible operates within his law. As I explained, the law of God is rooted in his nature, it's not arbitrarily decided. God cannot ignore his law, or he becomes a lawbreaker himself. Well, remember the part where God said, thou shalt not kill? Yeah, he also killed lots of people, so didn't he break his own law? So why shouldn't he suffer his own punishment? And if you say it's because that God has a just reason to kill whoever he wants to kill, then is it okay to kill if we have a just reason in God's eyes? Because then we could break God's law as long as God saw it as okay, right? That's just a thought. And law-breaking is sin. God cannot sin. Sin is that which is against God. God cannot deny himself. God cannot go against himself. God cannot contradict his own nature, or he would cease to be God, and God cannot cease to be God, because God is God. Unless, of course, there is no God, in which case, God isn't God. So then, yeah. And so any religion that says God can just forgive sin without atonement is uh, portraying God as unjust, as a lawbreaker, breaking the law of God that says the punishment for sin is death. Also ignoring, of course, what Moses said in Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement, for it is the blood that makes atonement. So God can only be pleased in bloodshed? Don't get me wrong, I'm the same way, I just don't think that's the kind of dude that God is. Peter did not understand why Jesus had to die on the cross, just as many people do not understand why Jesus had to die on the cross. In fact, you're going to find many people and many religions deny that Jesus had to die on the cross. And what did Jesus say about that? He said it is from Satan himself. For this reason, we need to be very careful. We do not want to be following the devil unwittingly. You're wrong because I think you guys are from Satan. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not just missing out on the deal of a lifetime, you're missing out on a lifetime itself, a lifetime with God, eternal life with God. 
For those who reject what I've told you in this video, if you reject the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you will stand before God one day as a lawbreaker with no covering, no atonement for your sin. You will stand before God and be judged for your crimes against the God of the universe. That is, of course, if God exists, which is a whole nother debate. God bless you. God can bless whoever he wants. That's the end of the video. Now don't get me wrong, it's not unreasonable to be religious, but I do want you to think about the things that you're told. I always felt like I was dead inside. Now I know why.